But here's the problem. Mexico has no, Mexico City, the, the government of Mexico City, has no desire to, to allow Texas to become a standalone state. Uh, it doesn't have enough population, and they just don't trust the Anglos in Texas. They don't trust them at all. Um, and so this is what the fight is about. So Austin goes in 1833, he goes down to Mexico City, he tries to persuade the Mexican government to, to create Texas as a standalone state, separate from Coahuila, and he fails. And on his way home, he writes this letter saying that Texas should separate from Coahuila on its own. And he writes a letter, which was kind of dumb. He was not characteristic of Austin to be so dumb, but in this case he was dumb. Uh, and the letter was captured by Mexican spies and long story short, Austin was thrown in jail. But I want to make the point, Austin's not thrown in jail for, for advocating that Texas leave Mexico. He's thrown in jail for advocating that Texas become a separate state on its own. And that Texas just declare itself a separate state within Mexico. Okay, so we're not at the point yet where Texas most Anglo-Texans are willing to break from Mexico. What they want is they want Texas to be a standalone state, but Mexico City, the government of Mexico City, just will not allow that because they don't trust the Anglos in Texas. They just, they will not allow Texas to be a standalone state. So this is the big fight. Um, and so Austin is thrown in jail and he doesn't appear back in Texas until the fall of 1835 during the first siege of San Antonio, when the Mexican army captures San Antonio and is kicked out of San Antonio in December of 1835. But I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so another point I want to make. The Texas Revolution gets caught up in the Mexican Civil War that occurs when Santa Ana seizes power in 1835. Uh, Santa Ana, it's kind of a complicated story. Uh, he, but just to get right to the point, in 1835, he seizes power in Mexico City. He declares himself the dictator of Mexico, and he voids the Constitution of 1824. In other words, he consolidates all the power in Mexico City. Um, so what you have when Santa Ana takes power, the centralists now are on top. Uh, they're the ones in power. And the, in the Constitution of 1824, which had given so much power to state governments, uh, like in Texas, uh, in Coahuila, the, the Saltillo was where most of the power was, that Constitution is now voided. Mexico City the power of government in Mexico is now concentrated in Mexico City, not in state governments. Okay, why is this a problem for Texas? It has to do with slavery. The folks in Mexico City were completely against slavery. Uh, Mexicans had no, uh, for the most part, slavery did not exist in Mexico. The only place it really existed uh, was in Texas. And for all their faults, uh, the, the Santa Ana and the other centralists were anti-slavery. Okay, Whereas during the Federalist period of 1824, uh, at the, with the Constitution of 1824, Texans could work with the government in Saltillo to kind of mitigate the impact of anti-slavery feeling in Mexico because there were powerful elements in the Saltillo government that wanted slavery to see, succeed in Texas because if su slavery succeeded in Texas, then people would grow rich because of the cotton trade, okay? So when Santa Ana takes over and he takes the power away from Saltillo, this is an existential threat to slavery in Texas because the government in Mexico City has no interest whatsoever 
in keeping slavery alive in Texas. They just don't care about it. And so this, what happens is the Texas Revolution gets caught up in a number of revolutions in, uh, after Santa Ana takes over. The Yucatan tries to break with Mexico. Zacatecas tries to break with Mexico. And as I talked about in an earlier podcast, Santa Ana goes in and just crushes Zacatecas with extreme violence. In Texas, they're very unhappy that Santa Ana has taken power, that he's voided the Constitution of 1824. They, for the most part, like that constitution. They just wanted Texas to be a separate state within that constitution. And they fear that since all the power now is in Mexico City, that Mexico City will at some point come after slavery. Okay, So this is the big problem uh, in Texas. This fear, they don't like Santa Ana. They don't like the fact he's a dictator. They don't like the fact that he's voided the Constitution of 1824. They don't like any of that. But the other thing is, is they don't like the fact that Santa Ana really isn't tied to any kind of uh, growth of slavery in Texas. Uh, it's just not in his interest. He's indifferent. He doesn't care. And so when he takes power... Uh, it, it, wouldn't, it wasn't like slavery would have ended in Texas the next day, but it looked like Texas slavery in Texas might be put on the road to extinction. This, so this is why Santa Ana, Santa Ana, when he sees his power in 1835, he's a threat to Texans on many levels, but he's also a threat to slavery down the road because Santa Ana doesn't care about slavery. He has no interest in slavery existing in Texas and in fact, most of the governmental officials in Mexico City are anti-slavery for all their other faults. Okay, so that's where we're at. Um, now I want to talk about, uh, um, I think I'll stop there and then I'll start talking about the Christmas.